Now in today's video, I'm going to talking about what happened to Jeju Air Flight 2216 that was crashed in uh, Muan Airport. So now in this video, we've seen that the landing gear has, hasn't come out. And now, And the plane was suddenly over on the runway and hitting that concrete block. Now that concrete block is some kind of an ILS localizer antenna. So let's go ahead and go to the flight radar 24. So as you can tell, the plane was departed from Bangkok to Varnabumi Airport at, let's see, at uh, what is it called again? 1711 UTC. So 1715 uh, UTC was happened in 2 a.m. of course. So this Jeju Air was departed at 2 a.m. in Bangkok, Suvarnabhumi Airport. So as you can tell, the plane was departed nicely. And yeah, of course, the plane was cruising altitude at 33,000 feet over uh, Laos over Vietnam and then it continues fly over South China Sea and then right here it flies over Taiwan and then it flies over East China Sea and then the plane is descending to Muan Airport now interesting fact is that the plane uh, was struck by a bird strike of course in this accident and as you can tell in the flight radar the transponder cuts out, of course. The ADSB transponder was already cut out. So, and then afterwards, the pilots have to uh, go around on runway 01 and then make a left turn and then make a right turn to towards runway 1 minor. So, let's go ahead and jump into the flight simulator to. To know about the accident all right guys so welcome to the uh, fsx of course so now let's go and spawn the plane right here so we're gonna examine about this accident what is happened to jeju air flight 2216 all right so i got the jeju air livery installed to the flight simulator and yeah we're spawning in muan airport to examine what was going on so if we go to that website called the Aviation Herald, so the weather was was you know cleared at that time of the accident. As you can tell, this is the METAR. And here is the communication on what is exactly happened on this flight, of course. So the pilots were saying that there was a bird strike that was happening on approach they say mayday 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 and the plane got struck by a bird and then the plane was going around okay so let's just jump into the flight simulator and see what is happening so as you can tell the plane is already at a localizer to capture the glide slope on runway 01 so as you can tell we are at 6000 feet and soon we will gonna descend to the runway so we're gonna capture the the localizer in okay so the localizer is captured So now we're gonna capture the glide slope any minute right now. So as you can tell the glide slope has already been captured. So now right around here, this is where it exactly happened. So right here we can see it was recorded right here that someone is recording a bird strike on this accident. So 
as you can tell yep and of course the plane has struck the bird of course this accident okay so now we're gonna have to go around go around left two So as you can tell, we have struck the bird, of course, in this accident. So now let's go ahead and... Let's try to fly over it, of course. So we're gonna circle around. So as you can tell the bird has already been striked the engine has failed of course at the time of the accident and then there were uh, the pilots were saying mayday 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 we have lost the engine number two yeah right now we can see the indicator that has engine number two has failed for from the accident of course so as you can tell, the plane make a right hand turn to approach on runway 19er. So as you can tell, the plane was about to land on the runway. So when the pilot's lowering the landing gear, yeah, as you can tell, we have lost of hydraulic, of course. As you can tell, the landing gear was read red. And now, in this case of the accident, right, the landing gear should be pulled onto this, uh, what's called again, this landing gear gravity, of course, the gravity gear extension, where the pilots have to pull the landing gear, you know, to make the landing gear go down. But in this bad situation, the pilot cannot lowering the gear, of course, from the floor. So as you can tell we have no flaps no landing gear at all and then the plane was approaching onto uh, runway one niner of course so as you can tell this is where the bad situation was there at that moment of the crash so as you can tell the engine has failed of course so now let's see so right here we are landing on runway two one niner of course So as you can tell, the plane was touched down on this section of the runway. Right here, right? Let's see. And then they were doing a soft belly landing, of course. Okay, right there. And then they were pulling the reverse thrust out. And then the plane suddenly was crashed onto the runway. And then boom. Yeah, now in the simulator, we cannot uh, simulate the crash that was happening here. Now in FSX, we don't have a, some kind of a, what is it called again? This, the concrete, uh, this concrete block on in front of that runway now in real life the plane was crashed of course the plane was crashed right here <laughs> and yeah that was a horrible accident that was happened yeah, as you can tell, yeah, as you can tell, runway overrun has occurred in this accident. You, here, for example, like Korean Air 330 that was landed in in Philippines, the runway, the plane has overrun the runway, and the plane survived, of course. Here we can see 
examples right here the plane was over on the runway also i've seen garuda inesia flight 200 that has occurred of course As you can tell right here, the plane had overrun the runway, of course. You know, runway, runway overrun do occur, of course, on this accident, of course. Here, for example, like Garuda Inesia Flight 200, that was happened here. That one was survived, of course. Now, as you can tell, on this time of the accident, there were many birds, of course, in Muan. So, actually, during the winter time, the birds were migrate, of course, during winter season. And as you can tell, this is the feeding area. So, the bird goes place to place, of course, from feeding area, and then goes to, we say, thousands, uh, 163 feet away. So the bird go moves to feeding area to another place, of course, another feeding area. So as you can tell, this is where all the birds were there, you know, were feeding area everywhere, of course. Now, bird strike could also happen in aviation industry, of course. You know, birds can occur sometimes in Muan, of course. Yeah, there were many birds in Muan Airport, for example. Okay, so as you can tell, on this that time of the accident, so the hydraulic was failed actually after bird strike. So what we can see right here, this is the hydraulic system on the Boeing 737. So this is the hydraulic system A, and then this is the hydraulic system B, of course. So as you can tell, system A controls engine number one, for example, and then the system B which controls the engine number two. So when the engine number two fails, the system B hydraulic has already been failed, of course, on that accident. And right here on this Boeing 737, we do have a standby system reservoir. Now this is the standby uh, hydraulic system, which actually controls the right thrust. Yeah, it controls flaps, of course, for example. Yeah, as you can tell on system B hydraulic system, which yeah, which actually controls everything, of course. Yeah, it actually controls landing gear, for example. Look, the lines, the green lines, actually controls landing gear. The main gear. So as you can tell, when on system A, actually, you know, it controls the landing gear, also controls the nose gear, of course, but. When the plane was about to land, right, the landing gear failed on approach, of course. Uh, the, so, let's go to the Wikipedia. What is a runway safety area? Now, the runway safety area is this one, of course, the typical runway safety area. So, right here, they were recommended. It requires a 240 meters, according to the ICAO. Yeah, the international standard ICAO requires a 90 meter uh, resa starting from the end of the runway strip, which itself it is 60 meters from the end of the runway, and recommends but not requires a 240 meter long runway beyond 240 meter clear area. In the US, the recommended RSA may extend to 500 feet, 150 meter in width. Yeah, they recommend 300 meters, of course, for, for the safer zone of the runway. So now let's go to Google Earth, for example. Let's see. Now, as you can tell, this is where it happens, of course. So now where is the measurement? Okay, this one. So here's the measurement, of course. So we're going to select this one. So as you can tell, it was 145 meters from the clear zone. But what aviation recommendation was, the runway has to be 
3,000 meters from the safer zone, of course. They only recommend 300 meters. So as you can tell, it is 145. Now, I'm going to explain to this accident why would they have to place some kind of concrete block behind the runway, of course. Now, this is such a bad idea. Now, in most cases, right, every airport has an ILS localizer, right? But they do not install this some kind of concrete, you know, concrete block, you know, that was on top of that ILS localizer. They mostly do not have, of course. And that's what we're going to talking about, of course. Okay, so now let's go hop into the Google Street View, of course. Now, this is Muan Airport, of course. And right over here is runway 01, of course. And right here, as you can tell, we have the concrete block, of course. And yeah, and of course, they have an ILS antenna installed on this run, on this airport. Yeah, as you can tell. So this is the final moments of Jeju Air occurred, of course. It was overrun the runway right here, and then it crashes straight through the barrier, of course. It's not actually barriers, the ILS antenna, of course. It was hitting this concrete block right there. Now, this is a very sad accident. All 175 passengers died on board, but four crew members also died on board, and two uh, crew members actually survived from the crash. Now, this is a very sad accident that was happening here in Muan Airport. And actually, right now in Muan Airport, as you can tell, most of the flights were canceled. But at the time of that accident, most of the flights were canceled. And yeah, when the investigator is finished, hopefully the airport will be reopened again anytime soon. So yeah. So I hope this video already been explained what is exactly happened here. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.